Welcome back, 0K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this next match is going to be a 3v3 between Rar, Snuggle Base, and Catastrophe against Lamadeus, North Chilean G, and Mr. Casanova. So let's start. Over on the eastern side, Rar is playing heavy tanks. We have Catastrophe playing hovercraft and Snuggle Base going for light vehicles in the northeast, while North Chilean G, not sure what they're going to build. Mr. Casanova going for the Shield Blood Factory, and Lamadeus going for the Light Vehicle Factory as well. And we have Hovercraft, Hovercraft, Shield Bot, Light Vehicle versus Light Vehicle, well, Heavy Tank, and Hovercraft. And right off the bat, we have a bit of raiding coming over to the north side, as is not unexpected. I mean, you're never sure whether your opponents went in the northeast, or northwest and southeast. And both teams did, actually. Both teams went for the entire western and eastern side control, which I approve of. That's something we saw last week where that didn't work out on Tuesday. That didn't work out too well when um, someone didn't. Anyway. So the starting out scouting coming in here from the western, the eastern team doing a really, really, really good job here. And the eastern side, not so much. They're taking a bit more damage, but it's... Sorry, the eastern side doing a great job dealing with damage. Western side is... I got rid of one metal extractor. But the eastern side still managing to scout quite a bit. Holy crap, coming in here from Snuggle Base, just... All... There's two darts here just doing a complete number. I'm actually a bit surprised they aren't... Okay, get from... The, the, the Mason! The Mason's yours! Ooh, maybe not. Yeah, they're, just, they're trying to run away, see what's there. That's good anyway. That's still quite useful. Knowing what your opponents are up to is a massively useful part of the game. So as it stands, East is doing a great job keeping this in a strong position. I really wish this would be swapped in the right order. Like, it would match the order of this player thing here. Because this, I'm pretty sure, is ordered by the actual relative position of the teams. Like, on the map. And this is not. Anyway. The... Hmm? There we go. So yeah. Snuggle Base coming into the north again with the Slashers, while well, at the same time Catastrophe is, it looks like they're setting up for a bit of an attack later on not really going for anything too strong while Lama Deus also going for the Slashers over to the southeast, essentially the same thing as Snuggle Base both light vehicle players are just doing the slow push with Slashers not a bad idea, I mean it does make it difficult for your opponents to get in it's essentially a mobile defender, it's just that can be countered pretty effectively if your opponents realize what's going on. At this point, though, I don't see a whole lot of counters coming from anyone. Like, no one's going for the light units that would deal with the slashers effectively. And Rar's commander, as always, of course, in the front. Machine gun and Nanolith. Lamadeus also upgrading their commander a little bit, but we will see, as always, Rar's commander probably at level 5 or level 6, assuming it lives that long. Because that's just what happens. Always. And there's the Halberds. This is exactly what I was talking about last game. Halberds, in theory, do a great job against Slashers. Or just avoid them completely. Make the Slashers complete move point. Oh, no wonder it's so loud. I really wish that volume setting would actually stay between games. At any rate. The... Where is it? Alright, so the Slashers taking out Rar's Commander. This is not great for Rar's Commander. Over to the south here, I mean, the Halberd's doing a fine job, though one Metal Extractor at the cost of a whole Halberd is not really worth it. I mean, they did help Rar's Commander stay alive long enough to get that Stinger up, but even then, that Stinger might not last too long. Same time, more Halberds coming in here. A direct assault on the Commander, in fact. At least on the Commander's Firebase here, over with Lamadeus. I don't know if Lamadeus is going to lose that too easily, but they might just. On top of that, Snuggle Base coming in with their own slashers. Trying to completely eliminate Lamadeus' commander here. Or at least push it out of the south center of the map. Just to open things up a bit so the eastern team can actually build some stuff up over to the south. And holy crap, Lamadeus needs to move their commander back if they want to not lose it. It's getting pretty close to death. The scalpels coming in here are essentially just... Sorry, scalpels. The halberds coming in here are wasting the slasher missiles. Or wasting the defender missiles, rather. So Lamadeus' commander... I mean, they have the they have the levelers. That's something. That'll at least keep the halberds more or less at bay. But this is... The whole point is the eastern team is able to get the southeast now. Like, that has been taken. 
whenever Catastrophe wants to go deal with that, they can go deal with that. It's no problem. Still, I think Snuggle Base might actually be losing this engagement. They do have a few more slashers, but the slashers are not hitting the opposing slashers. So, this could still fall apart. Lama Day is probably going to win this engagement. The Halberds coming in here should break this apart, even though the levelers will be causing some grief. At the very least, it pulls away some of the slasher missiles. But even then, Snuggle Base is forced to retreat. Some damage is dealt here, though. I mean, it's still a bit of a pushback, but Snuggle Base is forced to retreat, and they can't easily reinforce, especially not when we have... North Chilean G coming over to the northern side of the map, basically getting in the way of any Snuggle Base reinforcements. And Mr. Casanova already walling up again. I'm pretty sure this is just their thing. I just set up and wall up. Like, that just seems to be how they play. I don't really get it, but it has worked in the past, so... I mean, I guess it's a thing. It can work. It's not really what I'd like to see, but... Well, whatever. I'm actually kind of glad there's some variety, so I'm not, I'm not miffed. At any rate, the... The territory has been taken. That's kind of been the point. Lamadeus is opening aggression somewhat punished. Not terribly punished. Forced to get a bunch of levelers, but... Yeah, not it's not terrible. However, on the northern side... Thunderbird coming in here on top of all the stuff that North Chilean G was already building. So the first air switch of the game. And Snuggle Base, I don't know how prepared they are for it. They have slashers. That's not really enough. Don't see that working out too well. And the Pillager coming in here just... Deal with that wall. Or at least deal with the caretaker behind the wall. Unfortunately, they only had radar coverage, so... Not able to see exactly where the caretaker is. Still against this giant group of units. That actually, that pillager will work fairly effectively. Ooh, just by the commander. At any rate... Slasher going to the north here. This is going to be falling apart very shortly. As soon as the Thunderbird's up... Wait, the Thunderbird is up. Where'd the Thunderbird go to? Should be a Thunderbird here. Is that getting like, no money at all? Nope, there's only one Thunderbird. Okay. That's... How did I miss that? Did I... No, I can't have missed anything. That was just... Yeah, there's no any, any indication that a Thunderbird was used at all. Now, Mr. Casanova trying to use a wall to keep themselves alive while pushing forward, which... Very Mr. Casanova. Very much their style. And this is actually where a Thunderbird would be extremely handy for the Eastern team. Though the Eastern team is doing a fine job with the territory. They are slightly behind economically. And it seems like Lamadeus is managing to push back in the southern side. The northern side, like I said, that Thunderbird getting up will just completely f collapse Snuggle Base's defensive attempts. Like, that's going to be gone. As soon as that happens. And over to the southern side, of course, well, similarly, RAR is being pushed pretty heavily and going for the Mr. Casanova-style walls just to stop the slashers from doing what they do. But at this point, just waiting on the Thunderbird, which should be up. There it is. There's the Thunderbird right now. And it should be moving in very shortly. Once it gets that... Yeah, once... It, there it is. There's the shot. Well, just about there it is. And suicide run, but totally worth it. That opens everything up for the rest of North Chilean G's forces to completely wreck Snuggle Base. And there's nothing Snuggle Base can really do. I mean, their commander is the only unit they have in that area that's actually available. The only thing is, their commander is a pretty good riot unit right now. But still, the defensive line has been broken. North Chilean G has been able to open things up. And Mr. Casanova is now setting up another further wall as part of their general hard push strategy. Not much permanent damage, though. I mean, less than I expected. The daggers didn't really do all that much. And there wasn't enough besides. But yeah, that's something. Same time, though, Lama Deus over to the south. Actually having a hard time getting through the halberds. This is exactly what I was talking about. Slashers just can't do anything against halberds. Anyway, the... Man, this attack over the north is still obviously being a bit of a problem. But the Thunderbird, of course, being that it's dead and there was a Wyvern being built afterwards, there's 
Gonna be quite a delay before that happens again, before it gets opened up to the north. So the southern side is the only part that this team can really break in. They haven't really tried breaking into the center. I mean, we're not really sure why. It doesn't seem that well defended. There's a couple stingers, but that's about it. The northern side has been the main focus here, even though all the units are there. And the southern side, same thing. Actually, this might work. Lombardais might be able to get in here with the Ravagers and Levelers, get through all of these Halberds. Scalpels, however, doing a great job pushing them away. And the Halberds doing a great job distracting them in the meantime. So this is actually working out very nicely for the eastern team, who is actually 4,000 metal ahead in terms of attrition. Especially given how much damage they've been taking and how much pressure they've been taking. But once again, like last game, the economy is in favor of wherever Lamadeus is. It's in the favor of the team with the worst attrition. Not by much, though. I think the attrition actually is to the point that the advantage is still overall the Eastern team. Assuming they manage to keep their factories alive, which shouldn't be a huge problem, but these halberds... These halberds could be an issue. Good choice in the Scorches, though, from Snuggle Base to get rid of them. That'll at least deal with that relatively effectively. At the same time, the southern side has actually been pushed back. Lamadeus, after losing those, the levelers and ravagers, forced back, losing a couple of masons as well, just for free. And a lot more territory has been taken to the southern side for the eastern team, but the western team is able to take the northern side and take it convincingly. Mr. Casanova getting loads of reclaim and setting up a nice set of walls and putting roaches in just, just for good measure. Just making it that much harder to come back. Not really in the best positions, I don't think, but... Still putting them in. Actually, are they trying to just go for the Pillager? Seems to be the point. And there it is, right on top of the Pillager, taking it out in one go. Definitely worth the cost. But now we have Thunderbirds back. This is what I was talking about before. The Thunderbirds have been built. But the question is, where will that be used? Probably over to the north again, but I don't know if they need to. Mr. Casanova's managing to completely tear apart everything Snuggle Base has built up. The northern side is falling fast. The southern side as well. This is where I'd use the Thunderbird. Just send it down here. Save Lamadeus. Like... Put Lamadeus in a position where they can easily take care of all these scalpels. Although it looks like they were being pushed back a little bit anyway, but there will be a counterattack or probably reinforcements coming in here over to the south. So it's still not great. No clue where the Thunderbird's likely to be used, though. Ah, it is going to be used in Snuggle Base. Just to try to finish off Snuggle Base, and that kind of makes sense. But at the same time, Mr. Casanova about to lose their commander. Or. No? Too many shields, never mind. Their, sh their commander's shields regenerate way too quickly and have too many of them that the bombers weren't able to do any meaningful damage there. I mean, they can try, but... No, it's pretty much just a suicide run. Same time, though. Penetrator goes down, and the Ravager's coming in here to try to deal with all this stuff here. They managed to get rid of the Felon shields, which means getting rid of all the rest of the shields, which actually does mean the bombers can get rid of Mr. Casanova's commander if they go for it, which they will... There they possibly go? It looks like they're going for it. But yeah, that felon actually is going to be the death of Mr. Casanova's commander. Although Mr. Casanova's commander is going to take like six hits to go down. Yeah, that's not great. Problem is their shields just can't maintain that. And the thing is, shields don't do anything unless the units in question... Oh, nice lightning gun. Or... No, that was just the... Ra the that was the racketeer. But yeah, the thing is, shields don't do anything unless the shield power is greater than the attack damage coming in. So if there's 799 health on that shield, and a bomb with that deals 800 damage comes in, it'll go through the shield. However, that being said, Snuggle Base losing their commander. Thanks to this Assault Force coming in here, that was the Wyvern coming in on top of the Thunderbird. So East Team losing their first commander... And it looks like both of them are giving... What are they giving? Oh, I see. They're giving storage to the Snuggle Base. Or... Maybe? Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, thankfully some spare storage has been given. But... Everything is still working out alright. It's just that the Western team did manage to get a bit of a blow. Still, the Eastern team does have a solid lock on the Southern side of the map. That's going to be the hardest thing to deal with, is that, that Southern side... And the center is also going to be a big deal. I mean, nothing's really attacked the center yet. Neither, play, neither team has gone for the center. That's been a bit of an odd aspect of this particular game. The Elven are focusing entirely northeast or southwest, and another attack to the north to try to take out what's been built up, but it looks like the Thunderbird not managing to get much follow-up. Really just managing to get a bunch of claws. 
Uh, over to the southern side of the map, not much has changed there either. And it looks like the Ravens aren't really doing much right now. Some of Vern's being thrown about, but not much. That's... Ooh, managing to survive. North Chilean G keeping their Vern for another day. At the same time, the Ravens coming in to do what exactly? Provide maybe some fire support over the center, but yeah, nothing's really doing much here. Like, this is pretty lightly defended, too. There's the Gauss Cannon, that's a bit of a problem, but other than that, there's like the Lotus and Defender and... Oh, never mind, there's a couple of Gauss Cannons. That's actually pretty scary. Anyway, Catastrophe... Yeah, playing a bit of a team game. You can tell in the chat that they're basically being ordered what to do. I mean, I'm not terribly surprised. It's kind of tricky to know what to do. I mean, Cat Catastrophe's played quite a few 3v3, so I'm actually a little bit surprised. Not sure how much they played Air, though. Although, to be honest, this game hasn't really had so much of an Air player as just players that have swapped into Air on top of other things. Mr. Casanova again on this northern side. Managing to get a bit more... Well, Mr. Casanova and North Chilean G folks entirely on the northern side, which has been pretty much the state of this game for most of the game. I still feel like the center is kind of open. The Gauss Cannons being built up aren't great. That is for the Eastern team if they want to attack. But they are stunnable. And you just go past them if you stun them. So, I don't know. That is a way around it. But at this point, just slowly but surely, the Western team is winning the attrition battle and, of course, winning the economic battle. So slowly but surely, Snuggle Base is losing their base. And with if they lose their base, that's actually where mostly the Western team has set up. So the Western team can pretty easily just flood in from there. However, at the same time, Halbert's coming in to try to just break through nano frames, trying to break through everything being built up here. And unfortunately, because they weren't on hold fire, or they weren't hold fire, but I guess they went for the nano frames for some reason, they are taking way more damage than they should. Really just giving Lama Day his medal at this point. Unfortunately, the scalpels were not behind them. I don't know if that would have helped any, though. That's still kind of tricky. The scalpels coming in instead. No, the halberds need to cover the scalpels. That's the whole point. Anyway, Strider Hub is coming in here for... Well, Strider's Dante coming in for Lama Deus. Should be able to break the south side pretty effectively, because the halberds won't be able to do too much. The scalpels will be able to do something. But still not much. So at this point, Mr. Casanova continuing to set up that wall. Like, slowly but surely, set up the wall to set up. Getting into Snuggle Base's base, gradually taking the territory. And over to the south, Lama Day is doing not quite the wall set up, much more mobile, but still very aggressive, tearing everything apart. I mean, absolutely everything. The Dante being forced back a little bit, and actually, I think we might see it go down, right? Yeah, we are going to see it go down. There's very little that can stop this happening, and there's the Dante down, but it still managed to do quite a bit of damage, and the Halberd's going down as a result, possibly. The scout, if the Scorchers do what they need to do, and they didn't manage to, actually. Catastrophe managing to get away with quite a lot of damage for very little cost. That was remarkably efficient. And Rar at the same time, already level 4, actually, only now level 4 commander, 20 minutes into the game, they're really focusing a lot more on units than normal. They're actually playing the RTS part of the game. <laughs> Normally, there's upgrade the commander to, like, level 8. Or higher. And just walk forward with that. But yeah, losing that Dante is a bit of a blow, and that's a lot of metal which, if Rar is able to... Or, but the Eastern team is able to take. And it looks like they already have it. It's a thousand some odd metal. Like, the Dante alone is 1,400 metal. So that gets taken by something, by anything, that'll be huge. And the Eastern team definitely needs it to get their economy back up. I mean, yeah, the attrition advantage, that was nice, but Mr. Casanova is in such a strong position that it still needs to... Holy crap, Mr. Casanova's more upgraded than RAR! That is actually kind of amazing. Rocket launcher, machine gun, and napalm on top of the rocket launcher with a bunch of drones. And the Aegis just to support everything else. Or sorry, Aspis when it's moving. Aegis is when it's stationary. Sheesh. That's kind of ridiculous, actually, when you think about it. 
Like, Mr. Casanova is in a position where they're just... I think they're just waiting on when to attack. Like, they're just trying to go for the container on Snuggle Base, really, as far as I can tell. They just want to keep the Eastern team from getting territory. But the Eastern team, if they get the Southern Reclaim, which they are, quite high numbers, too. That's 2,000 metal worth of Reclaim in total. And they're taking that hard. So this isn't... Like, the Eastern team is still getting way ahead economically. They have the attrition advantage. In a couple of minutes, the Eastern team could actually blow back here. And if Mr. Casanova's commander dies, that is going to be an absolutely devastating blow. Not sure how that would happen. I mean, you pretty much need to have, like, the missile silo. Fire some... I'll probably fire some Shockley's in there and then follow it up with Eos's, but... Yeah, it's not much. I mean... I like the use of the Racketeers, because that does break the shields pretty quick. Like, status damage deals a lot more damage to shields than it does normally. But still, that's... That's still pretty tough. They, they're getting rid of Mr. Casanova right now, given how entrenched they are. And I love to use the Outlaw, though, because the wall actually is being used against Mr. Casanova here with the Outlaw, because they can go through the walls... And Mr. Casanova can't do anything about it, because none of their units can do that as well. I mean, they could build outlaws themselves, they just haven't. And as a result, losing a lot of their thugs. Which means losing a lot of the shield power that's being used to keep this whole defensive setup going. Which means opening it up as soon as a worker gets here and starts leveling out all this terraform. That'll basically be it, and it doesn't even matter. Mr. Casanova forced back thanks to the outlaw. Very smart thinking from Snuggle Base there. That was extremely clever. I mean, I don't know how much they encounter walls, but... Yeah, outlaws, just... That's the way to go. You just... You don't have to worry about that. I mean, it's still not a great position, because it is still a position... What the heck? Oh, I see. What the... Huh? Oh, there's... That's why. There's a scorcher right there. But yeah, that's the thing, is like this this position is actually pretty strong for the Eastern team, and now like they've managed to break back. The walls are are not great. They're still designed for the Western team to use. But at least there's some opening for the racketeer to get in or racketeers to get in. At the same time, the southern side of the map, Lamadeus does appear to be trying to stop the reclaim happening, but not able to do much. The scalpel halberd combo is just great here. Now, at the same time, Mr. Casanova with basically nothing left that can really shield them. So the Racketeers can just have a field day just breaking everything up. Ooh. That's unfortunate. The outlaw going down. It should have been behind the other side of the wall if it wanted to stay alive from the penetrator. But now they know. There are more outlaws left. They can go around the safer side and deal with North Chilean G's commander that way. And the southern side of the map is starting to fall down. Well, not only fall down, it's still stalemated. Like, there's nothing really happening. Lamedes isn't really able to break through. Rar and... Rar and Catastrophe are still managing to hold. The Pillagers are doing a fine job putting a bit of pressure on top of that, too. So, really, Lama Deus is having a difficult time maintaining that pressure. On the northern side, I think we're going to see the end of this. As looks like Snuggle Base is coming in and will be able to tear apart everything that's built up. Like, the Penetrator is doing what it can. But, right now, these outlaws, if they get behind the wall and start tearing apart Snuggle Base's commander... Man, that's Scorcher. It's being a pain in the butt. Snuggle Base looks like they're trying to terraform that Scorcher down so they can finally kill it. Actually managing to finally kill it. And it looks like the Outlaws actually aren't quite in range to deal with Snuggle Base's commander. Or North Chilean G's commander, sorry. North Chilean G's commander, although North Chilean G's commander has also become a bit more vulnerable. A bit more vulnerable as a result of that terraforming. I think that Bombers could hit it. I'm not totally sure, though. At any rate, everything around Mr. Casanova is essentially just getting locked down completely. And the Eastern team just seems to be trying to set up as they did... Well, not as they did, because Mr. Casanova was on the team in a previous game that did a similar thing with setting up. But yeah, like the Western team, they haven't really built up much beyond what they already have. They're getting a behemoth. Not really much else. Catapults coming in from the Eastern team is pretty much what they've spent all that extra money on, apparently. And they catapult up. And not much from the Western team. No no further striders. No nuke silos. Like, no silencers, for instance. The behemoth is coming up. Or is up now. 
But that is a bit of an odd choice. There's not a choice to see a whole lot. Not a terrible choice. Well, the catastrophe is to be rather surprised by that, but yeah, it's not a terrible choice. It's just one of those choices that you just don't see. Actually, the Eastern team could go for a silencer and they wouldn't have any problems. Though I don't know if that'd be... Like, that wouldn't be expected. That's not a normal thing to do. Although Mr. Casanova's commander might go down anyway thanks to the tremor shots. Forced back at any rate. Like, slowly but surely, the Eastern team has managed to break the hold in the North. And North Chilean G's commander also taking damage from the Outlaws. Not likely to go down anytime soon, but still... That damage is still damage. And the Halberds coming in should be addressable by these Ravagers, maybe. It's kind of tough. There's not much behind them either. So these Halberds are doing a great job still dealing with what they can. Or at least stopping the Ravagers from being on the front lines and the Racketeers as well. They haven't started shooting yet. That's the one thing. Once they start shooting, then we'll see what happens. Snuggle Base not going for anything but shields, though. That's, that's their main focus right now. And actually, the Halberds appear to be just scouting things out. And at this point, scouting out, there are no silencers, or really anything. Any kind of major artillery or anything out of the ordinary. There is a missile silo coming up. A tactical nuke silo, nothing major, no silencers yet. Which might get scouted out, though. Catastrophe's commander should go down in a second, thanks to these Halberds. Nice try with the penetrator, but not nearly enough. The Halberds able to take out the commander. So that's two eastern commanders down for zero western commanders down. North Chilean G's commander is still alive, as is Mr. Catastrophe's... Mr. Oh, sorry, Mr. Casanova. Mr. Casanova not doing a great job staying alive. It's having a bit of trouble, but it's not terrible. Still, these halberds are just doing a number, and they're probably going to get rid of the fusion plants. If not them, then the scalpels will! Taking out the air pant... Air pant as... Air pad as well. So Catastrophe taking a lot of damage as a result of that attack. That was extremely effective. And the Antinute coming in... A little bit unnecessary, but who knows, it might come in handy later on in the match, depending on how this goes. Like, for the time being, it's not terrible, but... Could be in five minutes we do see a silencer and a bunch of nukes built up from there. Still seems like the behemoth is the main focus, though. The catapult... Oh, this catapult shot could be really profitable. Holy... Ah, damage, no real deaths. That does, however, force Lamadeus back a little bit. And northern side with some Wolverines as, oh, North Chilean G's commander taking all the damage about to go down, but not bad Wolverine setups, actually. North Chilean G's commander saved by that double Wolverine. And it's still going to take a while for anything to happen with those Wolverines again, as in like three or four minutes before anything happens with those again. And it should see more catapulting going on. I mean, no, no real damage, just it seems to be forcing the hand of the Western team. More than anything. That's the biggest thing to set up, and that's the... That's the thing which actually might doom the Eastern team. Like, they're doing fine attrition-wise. Their economy has been relatively strong for most of this game so far. Especially the last few minutes. It's just the Western team is flooding into the North, and the question is, is that well enough defended? Especially against Halberts. And there's a lot of good tries to deal with that stuff. Oh, and the missile silo is not even done yet. Actually, it is done, but it's getting an AOS. Weird. I expected to shock Lee or an Inferno. But yeah, this is still having a bit of a tough time for the Eastern team. The Western team should might be able to break through. They're kind of breaking the center right now. Well, the question is whether they actually can succeed in doing so. As it stands, the Eastern team only has Rara's commander alive as a commander, which. Isn't that as big of a deal? I mean, they're actually pretty even in economy despite that. And the Western team is pushed back again. The Halberds coming out of Catastrophe doing the trick. Should be able to go to the Slashers as well. And they managed to take advantage of the opening to continue along. I don't imagine that they want to necessarily. That seems like a bit risky. And no, they are indeed not going for that. Because that is really risky. Mr. to note with the level 8 commander. Ooh, on top of... What just got lost. Oh, energy finally got lost. Alright, so the overdrive getting torn apart a bit for the Western team. But the Western team still has a lot of reclaim. Still has a very strong economy compared to the Eastern team. Their static economy is really strong as well. Looks like the Eastern team lost a lot of metal extractors, so... Our guess? 
Wait, no, I guess it never really was that strong. I guess he just was relying on the reclaim, and the southern reclaim has been used up, so there's not much left there. Or, in the center, there's stuff there. And the eastern team is taking that. The catapult should be able to get rid of most of these shields right now. There it is. Bit of friendly fire on the halberds, but still, all the shields are down. Mr. Casanova's commander is highly vulnerable. Dead! Not just vulnerable, dead and gone. Mr. Casanova losing their commander. That is a huge metal investment that just got completely wiped off the map. Like, that must have been 10 to 12,000 metal easy. I'm not even sure. It's actually hard to tell because it, there's no clear indication of how much all the crap on top of the commander costs now. But it would have been probably 12, 13,000. So a huge blow in the Eastern team's favor. Because that was a large part of what was keeping the Eastern team at bay, too, was Mr. Casanova's commander doing all the defensive work over to the northern side, which has mostly been undone, actually. And you can see that the Eastern team is leveling out. Actually, not just the Eastern team, they just got leveled out. So a lot of leveling out getting done, and a lot of Wyverns dying as well. Ooh, that is an expensive loss. Man, at this point, Eastern team is 40,000, 42,000 metal ahead. Did another Wyvern die? 42,000 metal ahead of the Western team for damage done, and their economy is just about the same. So I think for all the economic disadvantage that the Western team has had, the Eastern team has actually, or advantage Western team has had, Eastern team has made up for it, if not exceeded that through destroying the assets that were built with a difference. However, now that Mr. Casanova's lost their commander, we'll probably see a bit more investment in units from them. And indeed, they do have more rogues coming in and such. That's still good to see. So yeah, the question from there is what happens now with Mr. Casanova? Because they don't have a commander, so their investment's going to have to be units, and they're going to be able to deal with the battlefield more. So the question from here is whether or not that battlefield is actually going to be something they find relevant, or they're going to be relevant on that battlefield. I mean, Thug Rogue, at this stage in the game, with all the artillery flying around and everything, I don't know if that's that useful. For the money they have, I'd almost say either mass, mass raiders, or... I don't know, let the other people use the money. Or switch factories. Or go for the solid yourself, like, as is happening with the Infernos right now, breaking up Lamadeus' southern side. And over the north, the Tremors... Between the Tremors of the north and the Inferno of the south, the western team basically has no room to breathe. The eastern team is accessing a little bit, though. They need a bit more energy. But... Or either that or more build power. Not really sure which. I mean, at least have the Bantha... Oh, wow, a Bantha coming up on top of all that? I mean, I guess you might as well with all the money you're making. And North Chilean G is going for the Missile Silo. Not sure how well that's going to last, though. I mean, the artillery advantage is solidly in the Eastern team's court. They're easily winning that fight. And while it's known that the Missile Silo exists on the Eastern team and the Western team still has it hidden, the Tremor is hitting pretty much the spot that's going to be where the, missile, or that's where the Missile Silo is being built. Like, a bit more ground taken, and the Missile Silo is going to go down. At the same time, though, Missile Silo on the southern side, there's a lot in the way. I mean, it could get bombed out, maybe a couple of Wolverines come in and get lucky. But there's so much anti-air defenses that even then it's really hard. So I really have no idea what the Western team can do without basically grinding their way through back through either the northern side or try to maybe break the center where all the artillery is. Because there's not much defending the artillery. Just pillagers and tremors. Like, a mass raider of push might actually do the trick. There's not a whole lot of static defenses. There's some defenders, but not much else. There's not much that would deal with a bunch of raiders. Like, five dozen bandits just rushing in, tearing everything apart. Or scorchers, or whatever. Like, there's nothing really to deal with that. Well, the scalpels would deal with that, I suppose. But they're being dealt with pretty effectively. Yeah, I guess this artillery, raiders would do great. However, none of that's happening. And there's the catapult hitting the silo. Oh, just about destroying the silo, too. It's not even being built anymore. It's not even the focus. I'm not sure what Northland G has left. 
Oh, the Mr. Guys never clearly just dropped that. Mis no, North Jolene G is not finishing off the silo. But the silo is possibly dead, and. Ooh, that Inferno. Oh, that's no, Inferno. It's an Eos. That was really well aimed. Getting rid of another Strider Hub. I mean, there's. I think one Strider Hub. Yeah, there's still the Strider Hub down here in Lamadeus' base. But no Strider Hub over with Mr. Casanova. And North, Mr. Casanova has the same idea as I do. Get a bunch of raiders and push in. Deal with the artillery. Don't worry about all these... Like, don't worry about trying to escalate the artillery fight. Bypass it. And I think that Lamadeus is the right idea. Like, look at this. This is great. I mean, you got, like... What is this? Two dozen-ish? Yeah, you got, like, two dozen Ravagers. And a bunch of leveleders. Like, just rush in with this. Just go in with this. That's your best shot. All together. That's really the only chance you have, but that's not a bad idea with all the Ravagers. And that is exactly what Lamadeus is up to. Their best shot, and they're actually retreating quite a bit. Not really going for the Halberds. The Halberds, I realize it's a bit of a threat, but still. I don't know if they're going to go for it. Looks like the Western team is going to resign, though. Lamadeus is kind of the only one with an army that's actually able to do much. And indeed, the Western team... Or wait, what's going on here? No, maybe not. They're maybe they're not resigning. I suppose that over there. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to do. Oh. Well, looks like North Chilean G decided to throw and tell, and indeed the Eastern team does win. Slowly but surely, managing to get their to work their way back into the game. And as it was, yeah, if you look at the metal difference, 7,000 metal by what they had, but they already, like, 40, 50,000 metal advantages throughout the game. But you know, look at unit value. Like, this is massive. The economy was relatively close, so all the attrition just ended up becoming a spiraling explosion of, of unit advantage. And there was a point in the middle of the game where, especially when the Northern side was heavily damaged and Snuggle Base lost their commander, and a lot of damage was being dealt where a lot could have been done, but Mr. Casanova just stopped at the contain rather than trying to go for the kill. Which might not have been the best idea. Or at least it didn't seem like there was a whole lot being pressured off of that. They were just kind of waiting until something happened to them. And the Eastern team as well, the, the reclaim near the end was huge. I like think the Western team had a fairly high advantage in a lot of and a lot of metrics up until about the midway two thirds part of the game. And then it got then the contains got broken and then everything fell apart. And the Dante got killed too. Like the southern side of the map was really safe for most of the game. Also, some people were asking me about the UI. This is actually the default UI now. Like if you go to your settings and you go to the HUD presets. Like, this is just the default preset. The spectator panel stuff, that, I think, is default. It's... I can't remember if it's on by default. It should be, and you can just click some buttons here to enable it, and economy panels are a button, the player panel is a button, turning it on and off at all is a button. If you don't have it on, then you just have the economy display. Otherwise, you have this. And the attrition thing, I don't know if that's default. It, If it's not, it should be. So I'm not going to go into much detail about that, because that goes into turning on widgets from the widget menu, and I don't really feel like getting into that on stream, because that's a thing which will likely become, like, dev only. But, yeah, this should be default. I think it's somewhere in the menu. At any rate. And this thing here, this is actually a thing that I got that is also the panels in the side, and the... Trishing counter? Yeah, so... Trish Encounter and Factory Panel are two things that I do turn on with the with the Widget Selector menu, and they probably should be stuff that's part of the Spectator UI. The rest of it is completely default. Like, the rest of this entire UI setup is the default preset. Anyway, so with that question answered, this is that game. So the next game, and probably the last game for tonight, is going to be a... Um, I'm going to do this. Let me think. I think I will do... For a bit of a change of pace... A 2v2 on Alien Desert. 
So that'll be up in a couple minutes. It'll be Radavadra, North Chilean G versus CPO and Savitz Me. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs> 